Hello Alex, it's nice to see you here today. Uh, what do you think about this magnificent event here, very crowded uh, community we see? Uh, what do you want to say? Well, you know, I'm very happy to be here. As you know, Turkey is big for chilies and socios. Yeah. So for us, it was normal to, uh, to, yeah. to represent here today, but also happy that Binance chose uh, Istanbul and Turkey to kind of um, connect the whole Web3 community here. Mm -hmm. uh, glad to see a lot of friends and, uh, yeah. and partners. You are so half Turkish, I think, right? right I'm now. almost at 33% <laughs> <laughs> Turkish. Uh, but no, I'm very happy to be here. And, and it's very crowded, to be honest. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of quality uh, people, so very happy. Yeah. So secondly, uh, your socios and Chile's initiatives are leading fund token ecosystem. Uh, you put a great vision and value uh, to the ecosystem since the beginning. Uh, we would like to hear from you about what is next for fund tokens, uh, what you expect. So the first five years of Chile's and socios was all about creating the ecosystem. We're creating Socios, which, was, which is the mobile app and the platform where you can buy and sell token and use the utility, voting, the benefits, etc. We had Chili's, which till now was just a token. Now it's a blockchain. It's a layer one. We like to call it the sports blockchain. Um, and the idea was, the last five years, 100% of the utility of the fan token was, was done by us and the clubs. We want that the next five years, because of the chain being a permissionless chain will allow developers, uh, will allow clubs, will allow anyone to add utility to the token. So to not be just dependent of, of socios. Here in, in Istanbul next week, there is a hackathon for the ETH Global mm -hmm. and there is a Chili's hackathon and there will oh, okay. be, I don't know, 100 plus developers that's going to develop features, develop product that we hope eventually will be used uh, for the fan tokens. Okay, thanks for answer. Uh, and many new fan token initiatives copied your business actually. Uh, business strategy, uh, which was actually inevitable because you created a competition uh, about fan tokens. However, do you think that the fan token ecosystem is uh, following the right way to grow, or is there some misleading because of this copying? I, I, I don't. In all fairness, and I will be a little bit uh, cocky saying that we, we don't have competitors in fan tokens. Actually, you may not know that, but fan token is a trademark we own in Turkey, but <laughs> we own in Europe, US, UK, etc. The reason I'm saying that is it's not that because you launch a token of a sports team that it's a fan token. If ah, okay. there is no utility, if there is no platform to support anything behind, it's just it's a just meme. Name. At yeah. that point, it's just a meme. <laughs> yeah. So. We, we don't have any really competitors. Uh, we don't, it doesn't matter anyway. Now we have 100 plus sports team we work uh, in the world with. Um, and people need to understand that in the internet space for the last 25 years, there is always what we call an oligopoly or almost monopoly, meaning that there is always one operator, Amazon, Match.com, Expedia, uh, Booking.com, that owns the vertical. Mm -hmm. And that's true. And in, in sports slash Web3, we believe it's us. Uh, but it makes sense because there is a network effect. A fan of a team in Turkey is also a fan of PSG, is also a fan of UFC, is also a fan of Formula One. So the more we aggregate IPs and brands in the same ecosystem, the more it benefits to the fans and to the clubs. Okay, thanks. And so I want to ask more about your growing strategy. What is your growing strategy? Uh, how do you plan to expand? And what Turkey uh, is a, how Turkey plays a part on this journey? Um, our, our growth strategy as a, as a whole is really focused on the chain right now. Uh, we're allowing developers especially to launch new features. As I said, there is a hackathon here, for example, next yeah. week. So we're going to invest in developers joining the chain, building product, building project. When you think about it, and I will take Turkey as an example, you know, fans of Galatasaray, 20 million people in Turkey, let's say more or less. Out of these 20 million people, how many are developers? Few hundreds. Imagine what is it for a real Gala fan, Galatasaray fan, to be able to develop something for the team they like. Now you take that by as many teams as we have in Turkey, in Brazil, or anywhere, in, uh, anywhere else in the world. So we think, you know, there are a lot of developers who can develop on layer one, layer two, whatever, doing a DEX, doing liquidity pool, blah, blah, blah. Cool. But in the, in the, in the space of crypto, everybody is just copying each other and launching a new chain and doing the same thing. We don't want to do that. <laughs> For us, is hey, we are providing you the best brands in the world. Mm -hmm. You can develop something with that. That's way more powerful. Yeah, okay. And last question. Uh, what are your expectations uh, for 2024? Uh, 
building, building, building. <laughs> I'm expecting something that everybody knows, which is the halving. Uh -huh. So not to be, no, not very difficult. I definitely expect ETF uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, all those um, are there. I mean, it's not expect. 95% will happen. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I hope we're gonna have better year because, and I'm not talking price market. I'm talking about the narrative, you know, the, the, the crypto narrative has been very negative for the last 12 months yeah. because of price, but because of FTX and because of and Luna ecosystem. and all of this. Yeah. It seems that we are at the end of that journey, the end of that cycle. So we can start a new cycle and hopefully we're gonna have fun. Yes. Alex, thanks for your answer. Thank you very uh, much. And thanks for your time. Thanks. Yeah.